New Right Network. Mobilizing, countering the left, energizing the right. New Right Network, home of the New Right Movement. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to New Right Network tonight. Your host, Brian Smith and Kerry Smith. Giving you all the breaking news of the day, wrapping it all up, making sense of it, exposing the fake news and giving you the real news uh, every night, Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. Crush the share, crush the follow if you're watching live right now. If you're not watching live and you want to watch live, 7 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Right here at New, New Right Network tonight. We're on the Facebooks. Uh, we were on the YouTubes, and we're having a little bit of YouTube issues. Are we? Yeah. Oh, gosh. What'd they do? I, this is news to me. Yeah. Apparently, uh, we are no longer allowed to go live on YouTube. Because of? Uh, claiming that the Carpe Duncum videos that we play. Yeah. We uh, only vo- played a couple of them. Yeah, that was the violations. And also, when we did the... Uh, Trump rally, yeah, uh, in Michigan. Uh, we had the audio going on that. The, the audio was going from the background, and they were playing the uh, um, "America was, the Beautiful" song. I something it was or God other. bless the USA. And but, um, yeah, it, it was a country singer mm-hmm. that sings that song, and they gave us a strike on that. So we're not live on YouTube's for right now. We've disputed it, and we'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, we're live on Facebook at New Right Network and also at Smith Radio, both live simultaneously, and on the Periscopes at New Right Network and at Smith Radio, SMY, TH right. Radio. So there's a lot of different places. I'm to the point now where I can't be censoring myself or altering what I say, and that's really what it's all about. It's about controlling behavior. Because YouTube has all kinds of really weird rules or whatever. And, and I'm not saying that protecting copyrights uh, law is is a bad thing. It's just that, you know, it's a little ridiculous. Yeah, their algorithms, especially the algorithms on Twitter now, are, are just uh, beyond even, – even to the point to where we believe that, that it's out of control for Twitter. Like I don't think Twitter can gain – a hundred percent control. They've lost control of there's, their algorithms. Yeah, there's spe- the speculation is, and I think it's pretty accurate that there's so many people that are writing algorithms and they get lost into millions and millions of lines of code that an algorithm could be put in that nobody knows where it is, what it does, or even who wrote it, and it affects the actual behavior of the website. Its treatment towards certain groups, conservatives, right. whatever it might be, it it uh, is is triggered by certain keywords or certain actions, and nobody's really sure what the hell is going on over at Twitter. It's kind of like Microsoft. For those of you who are frustrated with Microsoft, the lockups, the issues, the problems, things like that, uh, I was told by a programmer that all the programmers in Microsoft do a lot of copying and pasting oh, right. of program code. Sure. For a new new program, for new code, to extend the code, and there's a lot of code that's left in there that's that, unnecessary. Sure. Yeah, that's – there's – um, gosh, we're getting pretty high I'm level sorry. here. We're, we're getting pretty <laughs> high level here. Yeah, so programmers, um, programmers don't sit there and say, okay, they got a blank sheet, and then they start writing code. Uh, that's what it was back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Yeah. You start getting into the 90s, and all of a sudden, people will write, write these things called objects. Right. And instead of rewriting an algorithm or a piece of code that does a certain task, a programmer would, would copy and paste what these objects 
onto their code in order to make it perform the way they want it to perform. Nobody knows what's in these things. No, no. So it's a little bit out of control. And ironically, the reason why I, I think the reason why this came up is because before the show, Carrie and I were discussing local politics and mm-hmm. um, and um, individuals that have been elected officials that uh, don't understand that certain things don't Ugh. cost. Yeah, a certain uh, my, amount of money. The local city that I live in, that I vote in and pay taxes in, <laughs> uh, uh, informed me yesterday that they spent twenty five thousand dollars on a website. That if you check it out, I'm not going to name it because I don't no, want no, you to no. dox no, everybody. No. But uh, it's definitely doable by a non programmer who knows something like, let's say, WordPress. Because this was created on WordPress. I don't know. I don't know if oh. it was created on Word. I'm just saying that okay. it could certainly be done in WordPress. <laughs> certainly. It's at $25,000. And it, it, it oh. might take a week to really get the architecture set up. As far as populating it with the actual files and whatnot and, and information, maybe a couple people, a couple days populating it. But yeah, $25,000 of my taxpayer money. And that was uh, that was rec- that company was recommended to them by another city who spent twenty five thousand dollars for the same company to do it for them. So get There's, involved in your local uh, politics. Get and, involved and in city them. council. Yeah, if you own a business, fleece them, <laughs> fleece your local cities, and then and then you want to leverage that by asking them to uh, recommend you to the other. Cities. You know what I could do? I just came up with a business idea. Because I'm always thinking. Always fleecing. <laughs> <laughs> I could go to these these towns, these small towns and cities and whatnot, do it for twenty thousand dollars. Save them you're saving them five thousand dollars. And then call my buddies in Romania. Oh, and do it for like maybe two thousand. <laughs> maybe two thousand. That's that's on the high end. That's that's, my... that's state of the art Romania right, right. there. And I I will get I will be able to demand the best of the best out of Romania. Yeah. And don't think that two thousand dollars is not the best of the best. Those guys are good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Real good. The, the Romania is good uh, as opposed to, say, like Pakistan and India, ha- that would be one-third of that price. You'd pay about $700. Right. right. As opposed to 2000 in Romania. But the quality is definitely down a little bit. Um, and, and I'm a little reluctant to spend my money on Pakistan, like well, that, send it to them. Yeah, well, that and if they're setting things up and you don't hear from them for a couple of weeks and you can't get a hold of them, they're not, nowhere to be found, yeah. might have been bombed. Uh, that, <laughs> something might happen, you know? I just sound like you're speaking from experience. Like that happened <laughs> to you or something. You're working with some guy and he disappears. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, so that's the tech uh, <laughs> portion of this show. And we're going to get into the news of the day. We've got uh, the Democrats promising to, uh, in the lead up of promising to uh, subpoena the Mueller report. The full unredacted. Full unredacted. Yeah. And we're going to talk about what happened today. Breaking news. It's, it's begun. It's happening. Democrats are going bonkers. They, they're really getting crazy with this and they're gaslighting their people. <clears throat> this has been coming for a while. Joe Biden. <laughs> we have not really talked about Uncle Joe That's on this show. As far as I was concerned, the ship has sailed. We did say that. We did say that. Not because – okay. So we said that about Hillary Clinton in 2008. We thought that – and we didn't even start the show yet. We were just talking amongst each other. And we figured, gosh, if Hillary Clinton doesn't get the presidency, she'll just be too old. And by the way, it was Democrats that were really reporting on this that, oh, gosh, this is her last chance, her last chance. And it turns out that uh, she ran again in 2016. But here's the thing. If you look at her age during those two times, I, age was was a factor, but it wasn't like, boom, you're past this point, no way, no how. Joe Biden, on the other hand, looks very young for his age. However, he is 78. I don't know, but he's, uh, yeah, he's right. 78. So he looks great for his age. Sure. That's great. Uh, more power to you, Joe. Uh, look at Bill Clinton. He looks well, awful for his age. I don't know. How old is he? He's younger. He's uh What? Yeah, he's he's my mom's age. 
He born in 40, uh, uh, 46, 1946. He's, he was the first of the baby boomers. So what's that make him? 70. 70, I don't know. It's, it's like right around Trump's, a little bit older than Trump maybe. He's wow. 73-ish. And I always thought, wow, you know, uh, Trump is doing very well as far as energy and all that uh, for his age. Uh, Biden yeah. looks great. So 72 years old is how old Bill Clinton is, 72. And the thing about Joe Biden is it, you can look great for your age, but you are what you are and you can't fight Mother Nature forever. Right. I just don't see how he's able to keep the energy up at that age. I, I'm not saying that it's impossible. It's just – I just feel like age-wise the ship has sailed. OK. Now with that put aside, what is going on with Joe Biden now? Joe Biden's 76. OK. Okay. I was thinking 78. Well, could you imagine going... Bill Clinton running for president right now or right. in four years? <laughs> right, right. So four was... years from now. I mean, he already looks like he's 95. Right. It's going to be bad. So I was thinking if he runs 2020, he'd be 78 then. That's why Bernie I'm Sanders is 77. Bernie Sanders is older than Joe Biden. By a year, nice. yeah. Nancy Pelosi is only three years older than Joe Biden, and Nancy Pelosi looks pretty awful. She looks like Skeletor. For those, uh, of, yeah. for those of you who know about uh, uh, that cartoon. So we'll get into Joe Biden and all the things that are going on with him. Uh, I feel like the meme wars are really starting to ramp up for, for 2020. A lot of great memes are coming out. And Joe Biden memes are uh, becoming the easiest, I think. Oh, there's And, and just... some of the funniest. So we'll get into that. And then it's easy to make a funny one. It's hard to make a meme that people are like, oh. Oh, I am so sharing that. I'm going to use that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, yeah, with Joe Biden, it's easy. <laughs> we've got some zingers, folks. Um, also, we've got uh, the border crisis. I, I know we keep talking about it and it keeps coming up, but there's some things that have happened today. Donald Trump is making big decisions, uh, big moves, and, and bold moves. And the reason why this happens to be part of our show on a regular basis is because there's a lot of new – uh, avenues that are uh, the Democrats are attempting to go, uh, Republicans are attempting um, to go with them, and we've got a Republican that's jumped ship. Uh oh, jump ship on Trump twice. Uh, name, so name? Yeah, or you want to you want to leave that hanging? Oh, we're gonna name drop this one. There's no question about that. Uh, Sheriff Clark actually exposed this guy. It was an article that was written at Sheriff Clark retweeted it. Uh, and I was shocked. Senator Mike Lee. Interesting. Uh, you know, he was a never Trumper early on. He's still acting like a never Trumper and he's siding with the Democrats. Oh, God. So we'll get into all of that. And um, <laughs> the avocados. The avocados. Uh, I'm actually glad that this has turned totally 180 degrees. And slap the face of the Democrats who tried to pull a number on this. It's um, – I'm really proud of everybody out there who has decided to be as outraged as me about it and t- they did – they turned it around. The Republicans have turned around this narrative of the avocado scare. Yes, yes. The avocado famine. I mean it's coming to a city near you and uh, growing up in Cincinnati – I don't think I ever ate an avocado in my entire life. My first one was just a couple years ago. Yep. It's just become this phenomenon. It reminded me well, back in the 80s of the kiwi fruit. Oh, that was a phenomenon. Like nobody, everybody had to eat kiwi. Well, because nobody had ever seen one before, literally. <laughs> and all of a sudden, late 80s rolls around and somebody presented me with a furry brown right. ball. No, no. And I was like – uh, that's not going in my mouth. No, and I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> For more than Maybe that's why I didn't. I, yeah. That's, yeah. So, so uh, I worked at a grocery store in high school yeah. and uh, in the produce department. And you were like, what are these furry things? I refused to do it. I saw – I would stack them. Until I'd, you I'd taste them, them and then you're like, oh my gosh, these things are great. And, and I was introduced to a lot of different exotic fruits and I just uh, – I don't know. I'm, I'm plain, plain Jane kind of guy. It's exotic. Yeah, I'm not exotic. <laughs> so start out. We'll get started real quick. Uh, the House <clears throat> Judiciary Committee voted today this at the Washington Times. 
The House Judiciary Committee voted Wednesday to give Chairman Gerald Nadler, who's a Democrat, the power to subpoena Special Counsel Robert Mueller's full final report and all of its investigative materials, as well as slap subpoena on five former Trump associates. Not saying that that has happened. They have voted, and the vote came down to 24 to 17 to give him the power. You know, like okay. 24 to 17. Does that mean that he'll be the only one to see the report, the full final report, not anybody else? Or does that give him the power to do with it what he wants? I'm assuming if – based he, on that language there, it sounds like he's allowed to see it himself. If If he successfully – subpoenas the report Mm -hmm. and receives it, then he can share it with the entire uh, committee. Okay. So not just him, but the whole committee. Okay. And there's an extra special step. They're claiming uh, that it must be unredacted. Who's saying that? This Democrat that was interviewed (laughs) and she's adding language to this claiming for unredaction. And uh, Fox News is just pushing back on them, pushing back. No, that's not what this vote is about. You're just saying that you want. And so here's where the gaslighting happens, folks. Oh, gosh. Gaslighting happens for their constituents. They want them to believe that Russia, Russia, Russia is still real. Mm -hmm. It's still ongoing. uh, And we are fighting hard for you, uh, uh, Casio Cortez Jr., you know, the younger ones, mm-hmm. we're fighting for you so that when you grow up, you'll always vote for us. And we are subpoenaing the documents because it's fraudulent. We know for a fact, according to Adam Pencil Neck Schiff, that he, there's proof. He's got evidence somewhere. Yeah, he doesn't want to give up the lie that he has seen evidence of Trump Russia collusion and that it is damning. And that it's going to cause not just Trump, but all of his associates, anybody, anybody involved with the Trump campaign to spend many, many years in prison. And obviously that was highly undermined by Attorney General Barr, who said that there is no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. And he determined, even though Mueller failed to do so, that there was not sufficient evidence to show obstruction. Correct. And this by Nadler... We need these materials to fulfill our constitutional obligation. Of what? (laughs) He's just throwing that out there to make it sound like he has an obligation and it's constitutional. It's bound by law. I can't even remain legal without getting this stuff. By the way, he's ignoring the fact that there is also law on the books which I later found out was put in by the Democrats in response to the Ken Starr investigation that a grand jury um, information has to remain secret. Think about that, folks. Grand jury documents. There's got to be names and places and dates and addresses, phone numbers, people, uh, information of of, uh, persons that have absolutely nothing to do with this right? and have been dismissed and said, oh, oh, uh, Brian Smith living at this address and this phone number, Uh, wife, kids. You're talking about doxing people. Was questioned but found out that he was uh, not involved and so we determined that we're not going to pursue him any further. That would remain secret, and it should. In a just society, somebody who is questioned about something and found to be – maybe maybe Brian had an alibi, a full-blown, foolproof alibi because he really wasn't involved. But all of his information and the fact that he was questioned at all is all in the report. His political enemies could therefore go to the New York Times and say, hey, write this article and make sure you put in there that Brian Smith was actually questioned about this and was a suspect in this, which, of course, would raise all kinds of uh, public – I'll take even one further. Credibility issues. Uh, My alibi happened to be uh, my doctor and uh, I was visiting with my doctor and I gave permission to the investigators to speak to my doctor – about the ailment I had. And that you were, in fact, there. Right. 
and that the alibi right. was legit. Now, now, all of a sudden, your doctor's exposed. Right. The doctor's exposed. <sighs> now he's got uh, client, client uh, uh, yeah, patient, client, privilege type thing is out the water. It's all out of control. That's why this has to stay quiet. So back to Nadler and the Washington Times, he, he says, we need these materials to fulfill our constitutional obligation, Mr. Nadler said, saying Congress got the same kinds of secret proceedings such as grand jury and classified materials during the previous impeachment style probes into Nixon 1970s and Clinton 1990s. Okay, so just as I said, you can't it's apples and oranges now, not because uh there was different issues that they were looking at. Let's just say that they were all the same. Let's say they all did the same thing. They're all accused of the same thing. They were all investigated for the same thing. And we know that Richard M. Nixon resigned because he was told that that impeachment was not going to be able to be avoided. Bill Clinton decided to stick it out and was impeached, but he wasn't removed because the Senate uh, acquitted him. No pun intended. Uh, what did I say? <laughs> stick it out. Oh, he stuck it out. <laughs> he stuck it out. Um, <laughs> Brian's always <laughs> going down the wrong path. No, so, but was... then you get to Trump, and let's just say that they all did the same thing, and they're just all handling it differently. The difference is, is that the laws that were on the books that are written, that are designed and written and approved by Congress, have been changed over the years. And now, what happened with Bill Clinton caused a bunch of new laws to be written to protect grand jury stuff. Right. And now we have Trump under new laws. That the Democrats wrote because they were so upset about what happened to Bill Clinton that now they've inadvertently protected Donald Trump. But here's the thing. Here's here's what he's doing here. What he's doing here in this article is attaching Trump to Nixon and, and the, the – the acts that yeah. Nixon did or the the actual act of resigning and attempting to attach Trump to Clinton who was and, impeached who was impeached right. so by reading his words he's saying that Trump should be impeached yeah and that's by design you know that some wordsmiths and consultants sat in a large room with a big old table in it and they talked for probably two hours on exactly how to construct this. Was it a tweet or was it just his statement? Where, well, this was a statement that was reported on in the Washington Times. OK. So it was it was determined by all these uh, expert consultants that you should absolutely name Richard Nixon and name Bill Clinton in your statement so that it can gaslight people into thinking right. that there's some sort of equivalency there. Uh, the the vote again, as I said, it was twenty four to seventeen. Uh, vote does not issue subpoenas, so just because they voted on this, that doesn't mean that subpoenas are, are automatically issued. Uh, Nadler now needs to take the next step and go ahead and issue them himself. Um, the New York Democrat who would oversee the impeachment effort, uh, the ability to issue them, so he would see if if he deems after he receives the documents that there should be an impeachment proceeding. He would be the one that would oversee the impeachment proceedings. Okay. And you're saying uh, 24 to 17? Well, how did that how'd that vote pan out? Democrats versus Republicans. Completely split down the middle. All Republicans said no. All Democrats said yes. Totally partisan. So uh, th- that lets you know that the House Judiciary Committee is lopsided 24 to 17. Yeah, it says that Republicans said that this was premature because Attorney General William Barr says he is already planning on releasing much of the report publicly. And Republicans said the materials he isn't releasing is protected by law, which makes sense. We already knew this. Right. We know it. So it's just a scandal again uh, with the Democrats to to, to continue to gaslight, to continue to infuriate people. Um, they said if Mr. Nadler wants to see that. He's going to have to go through a long battle in the courts asking them to unseal grand jury information. So, so just like you said, the Republicans say, go at it. Have at it, Nadler. You can have it, bro. But you're going to have to go through the courts right. to unseal the grand jury information. You just The one thing that's frustrating about all this, though, is that they are accomplishing their main mission. Their main mission – is to demand something that's impossible for them to have in order to entice the Republicans 
to come out publicly and say you can't have these. What, why are the Republicans saying that? Because that's the law and they're just trying to protect the law by uh, – and upholding the law by – you know, and protecting these laws are there for a reason. Okay, it's to protect the innocent in all this grand jury uh, documentation. Okay, so the goal though was to get Republicans to come out publicly and say you can't have this. That way, they could create this false narrative in the minds of people, gaslighting, if you will, into believing that the grand jury documents, the the Mueller report contains proof that there was Trump Russia inclusion. And how do we know? Because we want to all see it and the Republicans are hiding it because they are they are protecting Trump's crimes. And you're like, well House Judiciary Committee, well just let them see it. So that they can see it. You don't have to they'll get that info out to the public. No, they'll come uh, out and lie about well, it. Well then not only they'll come out and lie about it, but then we'll get leaky leak Adam Schiff <clears throat> to leak only the stuff that he feels is damning. And or, he, won't, he won't come out with any of the exoneration. Right, or, or leak uh, documents on Paul Manafort to send his prison sentence up a little bit longer, you know, like they did out of the Ukraine. What did they do out of the Ukraine? Uh, the Democrats and the FBI, the Obamas, uh, the Clintons, and the Democrat Party went to the Ukraine to hang out with uh, the corrupt high uh, – it would be considered like a, a James Comey over there in the Ukraine uh, – corrupt and uh, find – the black book, the dirty dirt mm. on Paul Manafort and leaked it to the media on purpose. There's video, audio of him saying this and saying that I am wanting to help Hillary Clinton. And he's being prosecuted in the Ukraine. There you go. So, I mean, I'm just saying more information can leak down. And this by uh, Representative Adam Gates. For 22 months, Democrats said there was actual evidence of collusion. True. Their principal Russia narrative was not truthful or credible. We were right. They were wrong. And the American people know it. For 22 months, my colleagues on the other side, many of them said there was actual evidence of collusion. And so now, clearly seeing that that is not true, we observe our colleagues moving through the stages of grief. Well, Mr. Chairman, you are now asking for documents you know you cannot have. And you're doing so in order to erode confidence in the attorney general who leads the Department of Justice because he has concluded that there was not collusion and that your principal Russian narrative was not truthful, was not credible. We were right. You were wrong. And the American people know it. You all were not telling the truth to the American people for an extended period of time. We were and you should not be trusted. I yield back. That is so, a slam dunk on uh, uh, their own. They're asking for something. He actually worded it way more eloquently than I did. But they, they're asking for documents that they know they cannot have for the only purpose of eroding confidence in the attorney general's conclusions that Donald Trump be exonerated or is exonerated right. and that he's uh, completely uh, without guilt due to completely – Insufficient evidence. And a little bit of flashback for us on Wednesday, a little bit of flashback uh, at Bright STRT. Apparently nothing. Why would you ask that in response to uh, it was posted just uh, uh, just yesterday that in response to Hillary Clinton back in 2016, August Putin has been a very strong leader for Russia. He killed journalists that don't agree with him. At least he's a leader. Putin did call me a genius. He said very nice things about me. Trump always seems to upend American foreign policy tradition in a way that benefits Vladimir Putin. The prime objective of the foreign policy of Putin has been to destroy NATO. NATO is obsolete and it's extremely expensive to the United States. Manafort has represented the uh, pro-Vladimir Putin uh, prime minister in Ukraine, Yanukovych. As far as the DNC hack, uh, there's strong evidence that indicates that it is the work of Russian intelligence. 
Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. That's perhaps one more reason why we're not seeing his tax returns, because he is deeply involved in dealing with Russian oligarchs. Is he getting money from Russia? Is his business built on Russian loans? This flashback, August 2016. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm surprised that something like that came out that early. And as far as my recollection is, is that Trump Russia collusion, Russia Gate, whatever you want to call it, Russian meddling, all those different narratives didn't really hit my radar really hard until the Washington Post came out with their first article that I remember in November 24th of 2016. Right, but we, that was August. We the, the whole Russia thing started coming out speculation, but nothing We didn't take it seriously because it was sal- silly. Yeah, nothing salacious. Well, the yeah, and the um the dossier didn't come out until January 10th of 2017. And so this August 16, it sounded like they were really pushing hard on Trump Russia collusion in August. And they knew they knew that they had Carter Page. They knew they were spying on Trump's campaign. They, they knew also, the dossier was floating around right, out there. Yeah, yep. the dossier had been written by uh, Glenn Simpson, Fusion GPS, all the way back as early as 2007. What? Yeah, he had this all locked in the chamber. All he did was change the names and the numbers. That's why Cohen going to Prague was wrong. Because they were looking for a Cohen oh my because gosh. they had Prague. They were looking through names, and they found Michael Cohen oh went to Prague. Wow. And it was the wrong Michael Cohen. This just shows you how fake what you think our world in politics is. It's whatever they send out there onto the a- airwaves, and you pick it up. I mean, it's as if – okay, so everything you know about your world is your brain interpreting – The light signals going into your eyes, the sound signals going into your ears, uh, feel, touch, heat, whatever, um, all your five senses, and uh, taste, smell, all that stuff. Imagine if somebody had control over what it is that goes into your eyes, ears, uh, smelling, taste, and feeling. Imagine if somebody had full control over that, 100% control. That's what is going on through the internet. It's that people are feeding you the signal exactly how they want you to see it. And it's fake. The dossier was written many, many years before Trump was even th- – anybody. nobody even thought that Trump was ever on the radar for politics until 2012. Right. You're saying the dossier was written in 2007 and the names were just changed to fit – the dossier that's already been written? Yes, and oh uh, and they were they were using the uh, saying uh, Ukrainian politicians uh, to help add more information to this and help kind of round it out and create something that that may or may not be real. And we know for a fact that the FBI was attempting to get jobs with the Trump campaign. In order to spy on them. Either in order to spy on them or uh, uh, other ones that were like Paul Manafort that may really have had Russian ties. Okay. And, and could could then th- throw Trump out of office. This whole thing was just a, a bizarre, insane nightmare. And this is not one where we say, okay, let's move on. It's over. No, no, because this ha- this can't happen ever again. This, this can't happen. This it literally has brought our uh, 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 our entire country to a point in time to where we clearly see that the curtains pulled back, and we clearly see that it was a one hundred percent coup d'état. I mean, maybe not so violent coup, but a silent coup that became uh, 
to the light that we all see right. what it is now. Yeah, and we've been calling it that for a long time. And to Bill Still's credit, uh, he called it a coup early on for for citizen journalism trying to take his job seriously. He was the first, as far as I was concerned, right. that really said. It. Certainly, mainstream media wasn't calling it that until many many months after Bill Still was calling it a coup. And you know, and it turns out, hundred percent, it was absolutely a coup. It needs to be prosecuted to prevent this from happening again in the future. We can't we can't let this happen. If we have an Obama, we have a Bill Clinton, I don't care who it is. I don't want our government treating them like this. I don't care if it's somebody who I really think is a danger to our country. Our our departments in the deep state should not be treating any of our future presidents this way ever. Right. And if you think that it's just a. a, a Appointed officials. You've got Bruce Orr. Bruce Orr was a lifelong uh, deep stater, rose to the highest position of an unelected official, a, a paid paid employee, who went ahead and worked with those that were appointed, not, not elected, but appointed, worked with those in order to create this and make this happen. He knew all the rules. If you're a lifer in the government, yeah. you know the rules. You know every single rule inside and out. They drill it into your head. And he knew that his wife working for Fusion GPS and him and her meeting with Glenn Simpson, with Christopher <clears throat> Steele, her obtaining her ham radio operator's license in order to uh, subvert the, the, uh, the telephones and the internet, uh, the devious things, and we also suspect that she was brought in because she was a Russian specialist to go into the uh, NSA database and start searching for these names to plug into the dirty dossier. I, I mean, all she should go to prison. He should go to prison. Yep. Comey to prison. McCabe to prison. Rosenstein to prison. Mueller, you need to find out. They need to put the screws to him. They need to put the screws to Mueller because this is not the first uh, blank up that he has ever been involved in. He's yeah. got a he's, he's an horrible abusive, record. He's in a very, very abusive person who uses uh, abuses power. He has a certain uh, level of power just from his position, and he takes advantage of that and misuses it in order to – do things to people that nobody should be allowed to do in our government. And he's very, very good friends with Weinstein, and that's – did I say Weinstein? Good Lord. A Weissman. Weissman. I'm, I'm getting all these dirty Democrats messed They're, mixed yeah. up. They're yeah. everywhere. Weissman. He's good friends with Weissman, who is just as awful. Weissman is known for this, to where – uh, intimidation tactics, yeah. uh, threatening. He'll uh, – if you say this – then we'll go ahead and let you go. Otherwise, we're going to charge you with things that you've never done before, never right. thought about doing. Good luck defending yourself against my forty-three million dollars uh, well, it's, bank it's account. The, it's the pinnacle of unethical behavior when you go to somebody, not knowing whether or not they're guilty of any crime. You don't have any evidence, but you figure we'll just question them until we can get them to say something that doesn't one hundred percent match up with facts that we know, then we'll go ahead and say that they must be lying about that. To me, that I think flies in the face of what the definition of lie is, almost like you, you're construing and misconstruing definitions of words in order to criminalize certain behaviors, forgetfulness or just being wrong. I mean, have you ever gotten 100 percent on a test? Sometimes. Have you ever missed a, a problem on a test? The way Mueller and his FBI and his special counsel was set up is that getting a question wrong on a test would absolutely 100 percent be uh, defined as a lie. If you lying to Congress. Yeah. And they, it, they had the transcript. They had the transcript of what General Flynn's conversation was with Kis, Kislyak on the phone while he was vacationing yeah. after the win. So he's vacationing. Who knows if he had a couple of drinks or if he's with friends and family? Who knows what it is? They've got the transcript. They're looking at it and talking to him and realizing the transcript. Oh, yeah. What oh. if you lied? What if you lied in a transcript that you you didn't know? Maybe I, maybe I was being recorded at the bar and I'm drinking and I'm saying all kinds of lies. Then I get questioned by Mueller 
in a dark room with the light over my face, swearing to tell the truth to the FBI. I tell them the absolute truth, and they're taking transcripts from when I was drunk and lying and saying, oh – you said this at the bar when you were drunk. Oh, but Carrie, uh, uh, they weren't doing that at the bar. Uh, yes, they were. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They had the... the uh, they were uh, doing that to George Papadopoulos. Right, the Aus- Australian diplomat in the Ukraine. I think it was sorry, UK. Sorry, in, in the UK yeah. that actually knows the Clintons. Uh, swindled uh, Trick Popdopolis into a bar and uh, get to chit chatting about dirt on the Clintons and the yeah, Russians. All of a sudden, they got uh, lies on record, and it's like, but it's not. It's not lies to the FBI. They just construe it that way. And as Rush Limbaugh and many others have pointed out, that it's up to Robert Mueller to decide whether or not something is a lie. And we saw that with Flynn when Flynn was interviewed by certain FBI agents, one of whom is a very famous but Peter Stroke. Yeah, Peter Stroke was one of them, but there was another one that was in there, those FBI agents determined that Flynn had not lied. Mueller came back later and said, "Mm, I'm studying this really closely. And I know the people that actually did the work say, "Mm, I think he was being pretty honest. But you know what? There's a couple of words here that aren't exactly inflected the exact way that I think it should be inflected. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the determination upon myself that that was dishonesty and therefore a lie. Flynn, you're going to prison. Not on that, but let's get the optics. Let's get the optics working. Let's work this up. And re- Folks, if you could tell that I'm really frustrated with this, I am. I- I'm going to the hilt with this. We're angry. Uh, uh, let's get the optics going. Let's indict uh, 57 people just just for indicting because you're going to indict a ham sandwich. Just and, so we can say in public that we indicted people. And i tell you what. Let's make a dawn raid. On people's homes and families, why? While these older individuals, because Manafort's older, uh, Roger Stone's older, these individuals that had dawn raids on their house are older. Uh, uh, wife is older. Guns blazing, ripping the door down, battering rams. CNN. Yeah, call set, CNN first. Set Make sure up. you get the there. And and how did that CNN connection happen? Because that guy who got the job actually did work. In the DOJ, yeah, with, you don't with think the that Comey, he still has phone with the Comey, numbers. with the numb, yeah, they got all these dirty rats. So we've got to continue to expose Democrats, and we don't have much more time on this one. Joe Biden, <laughs> speaking of Democrats, dirty dog Joe Biden. Joe Biden has um, he's Uncle Joe. Everybody calls him Uncle Joe, and then you know the, the, the singing in the streets. Uh, the village. I don't think that was him. I don't think that was him. America's friendly. I down. don't think that was him. Well, no. you decide for yourself because I love playing it. But <laughs> but with, with that, uh, whether that's him or not doesn't matter. Uh, he's got a long history of being in politics, being in it for himself, enriching himself, enriching his families. Uh, he's actually tied, and I, I made this connection. He's actually tied with his son John Kerry and John Kerry's uh, stepson to the Ukrainian incident, if you will, the higher up that actually let John dismiss the charges that would have landed John Kerry's son in a lot of hot water for the crooked dealings that they do uh, in the background with these governments. Joe Biden thinking about running for president and now because of the internet and technology (laughs) i don't think it's going to be possible we've now got multiple women accusing joe biden of inappropriate behavior and by the way there's a reason why this is happening so fast and so out of the blue turns out the democrats absolutely do not want him to run that this is a democrat operation (laughs) this is what they did to uh uh uh, Barack Obama's – when he ran for a Senate seat, they had a Democrat incumbent who was just sitting there. I'll be here all day long. It don't matter. Yeah. They walked up to him. And they said, you're going to not run this year because we need Obama in there and that's what we're doing. And don't make me open this yellow envelope. They had all <laughs> kinds of dirt on him. It wasn't even funny. Yeah, so Joe Biden really missed the boat by not running four years ago, uh, even though his dying son uh, made him promise, and he did promise, his dying son, that he would run, and he didn't. Uh, so he missed the boat. 
And if you believe in karma, I think that what's happening to him now is a part of that. And the Democrats, for whatever reason, and there's a lot of speculation going on out there, decided uh, Joe Biden ain't it. And it's funny because doesn't this say a lot about the Democrat Party? What does it say about the Democrat Party? Doesn't it tell you that it's not about democracy? It's not about a republic where the people come together and decide by a majority vote who gets to represent them in the various positions of government throughout the land. No, it is a shadowy private organization called the DNC who are the kingmakers. Right. They decide. The shell game. They are going to decide who your leader is going to be, who your dear leader is going to be. And right now, four years ago, it was not Bernie Sanders. It was going to be Hillary Clinton. Period. Right. And they made that happen and they'll make it happen every time. Just like right now, they don't want Joe Biden to run. And I know there's people that are Trump supporters. They're like, oh, I hope Biden runs because Trump will smash him. Guys, Biden's a likable person. OK. I know you don't agree. No, no, no. You do agree? It's, I'm, it's I'm, Uncle Joe. He's Uncle Joe. Yeah. You don't want Uncle Joe running. You want the evil – Hag Hillary running. You don't yeah. want the the sweet uh, give me a beer, Uncle Joe running. So, uh, but lucky for us, the Democrats are stupid again, and they're going to get rid of him. And that's what you're seeing right now with Joe Biden memes showing up all over the place. Now we're creating the memes because the left can't meme. No, and don't ever forget that. that. No, they can't. But um, so we're memeing it. We're helping the DNC out a little bit. But the DNC decided, well, we're going to release. The hounds. <laughs> and right. we're going to get all the women who he's ever hugged or kissed or sniffed Ugh. their hair. And we're going to get them to start making all kinds of allegations that have never been made before. So here you go. And we've got uh, Jolly underscore Cat. Uh, this is a clip from <clears throat> uh, from Chuck, Chuck U. Schumer being pressed. Uh, 100%, we the people would like to thank every last one of these DNC hypocrites like Chuck Schumer. The Democrats have proven they are nothing but partisan fakes who do not treat everyone equal and live as though they should be held to a different standard than everyone else. Yes. Uh, Joe Biden has had a couple of women come forward and say that he touched them in ways that were unwelcome to them. Do you have any concerns about the former vice president's behavior? Well, let me say this. First, uh, everyone deserves to be heard. So I salute the women who have come forward to tell their stories. Uh, When asked about candidates running, uh, I've always said they should run if they want to. And then the voters will weigh the pros and cons (laughs) and decide for themselves. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. What did I just say? They're the kingmakers. They're the ones who put this – this hit campaign out on Joe Biden, we're just here enjoying the entertainment. Okay, so I, if they're going to destroy Joe Biden, fine. That's just one less big name, big brand. That's a big brand. Guy spent eight years as vice president under the first black president of right, the DNC. Right. I mean, my goodness, this is a big brand here that they're going to take down. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll, we'll take abso- it. absolutely yeah. take it. Uh, there's all kinds of things that are coming out about Joe Biden. Uh, Alyssa Milano mm. has aligned herself. She's an idiot. With Joe Biden, 100%. Up, the, of all the human beings on earth, she's got to be top of the list of the biggest crushes I had growing up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I think we all did. I think that's uh, what made her famous, though. Yeah, the, who's the boss? Oh, right. so she was she was my age during that whole time, and I couldn't wait to watch every single episode. And it's so sad to see my childhood crush turn into such a moron. Right. So anyway, and, and because she is doing this, I just want to explain to you how non credible she is, and how the Democrats are allowing. Uh, unelected, unappointed uh, officials, uh, well, not officials, but un- just unelected, Hollywood status stars to uh, attempt to intervene in politics. Check this out. This at Thomas P. Kennedy 3. Watch Alyssa Milano, a non-resident of Georgia, threaten its citizens with loss of revenue for considering HB 481 Life Act. Milano claims she represents 90,000 entertainment workers in Georgia. 
her crew a blatant lie. I would call that a big fat lie. <laughs> uh, thanks, Darmisi Larcia from Georgia for supporting our unborn, not money. What district of Georgia are you from? Uh, I work in Georgia. Do you I vote in Georgia? I don't vote in Georgia. I was but just wondering what district you were from. There's 30 people outside that do vote in Georgia that I was going to but, escort but you in. Don't vote in Excuse me. Okay. Don't interrupt me. That I was going to escort in, but they wouldn't let me escort in. So if that's like, a, no, them. you don't vote in Georgia. No, but the people that work on my crew, the 90,000 people that the entertainment industry actually employs, do. So thank you. What's your name? Dominic Morris. So district one, nothing? I just answered your question. <laughs> These are the men that are voting on what goes on inside my uterus. Oh, God. <laughs> These are the men that are voting on what goes on inside my uterus. Have a great day. Yeah, yeah, what's up? Thank you. Did you know the Cup brothers don't live here, right? You know the Koch brothers don't live here either. Uh, this is this is sad. This is sad. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the, the real voters, and when I say the real voters, I'm talking about, about you and I, you here on the show with me. I'm talking about uh, my dad, my mom, uh, just John Q. Public, uh, anywhere, any town, USA. This is going to enrage them. Yeah. It, it, the thing is, is... I don't mind Alyssa Milano going wherever she goes in a uh, a district that she doesn't vote in and say whatever it is she wants to say. And I do agree with the idea that there are people that work um, across state lines such as actors where they will find places uh, on location to create their movies as far as um, their you know locations. And part of that might be in Georgia. And if they want to boycott Georgia, that's fine. But they need to just leave it at that. So, <laughs> you know, if the voters want to vote to kill babies in order to keep Hollywood weirdos to coming to their area and making videos there, that's something that they have to grapple with. Right. I personally <laughs> would rather – Hollywood never create another movie inside of Ohio ever again. Wouldn't bother me at so all. as long as we aren't murdering babies. Right. And that's that's the whole point of this. And again, I only bring her up because she is flaunting this picture of her and Joe Biden uh just saying that this is the next president and this is the greatest guy ever. Uh, so just destroy her credibility. And sure. <clears throat> at Real MAGA Steve, another classic zinger by Senator John Kennedy. This time he's questioned about the Joe Biden controversy and responds. Make of the allegations against Joe Biden that he made women feel uncomfortable. Did he cross the line into being creepy? I don't know. You know, I mean, um, you know, my, my, my feeling about, you know, I've said this before. Uh, just because you, you're uh, you, you're accused of something doesn't mean you're guilty of it. Um, this is America, and you do have a right to due process. On the other hand, this is no country for creepy old men, <laughs> and and it needs to stop. Do, do I consider it um, inappropriate to smell someone's hair? To get so close that I smell their hair? Yes. <laughs> I mean, duh. You know, somebody gets close enough to smell my hair, they may, you know, get to smell my hair, but they may lose some teeth. You know, I mean, it's inappropriate. And, and uh, but, but other than that, I don't know what else to say. This is no country for creepy old men. And, and leaning in and smelling a guy's hair or, or a woman's hair is a little bit, too close, for my judgment. <laughs> um, so is that guy a Democrat? No, no, no. Because I see John Kennedy and I'm like, wow, that this guy's related to JFK? <laughs> Republican from Louisiana, which makes sense because that accent. That yeah. accent, though. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say about it. 
Oh, you know who else from Louisiana? I think Forrest Gump. Forrest oh, Gump. Yeah, Forrest Gump. Man, I from think Louisiana. he's from Louisiana. He did the the shrimp. He did a lot of different types of shrimp. Right, and and, and uh, he, as Senator Kennedy needs to realize that uh, I, there is no room for no no room whatsoever. I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> and this one of a friends, good friends of ours at ALX. Uh, just, just listen. Here's, here's Trump. <laughs> here's Trump. Hey, no, give me, give me a kiss. Oh. I felt like Joe Biden. <laughs> oh. He says, "General, come give me a kiss." But the- I meant it. See, I meant it. <laughs> I meant it. Okay. I, I, he, he meant to give the general. I don't know. I meant it. I guess if you don't mean it, it uh, it doesn't matter. It's not creepy. <laughs> Wait, no, it's cre- it's creepy if you do it, but you don't mean it. Oh, you gotta own it. Yeah. You gotta own it. Yeah, oh, yeah, I could see that, and, and I say this all the time about uh, uh, the actor that you don't like that much because you don't think it's as funny. Uh, Will Ferrell. Yeah, I don't think it's that funny, but he, but does he owns own it. it. He does he owns own it. it. Yeah. He owns it. That's how he's able to pull it off. But uh, you can't come out of character. And this from a good friend of ours as well at Office of Mike. <laughs> Joe, no. Yeah. <laughs> you can't stop him. I mean, when he wants to start hugging and sniffing, you just can't stop it. Can't stop it whatsoever. And this uh, transitions us. And in, in why this? Because the Democrats are owning uh, the avocado story. They're trying to. What sad narrative that they're weaving here. So sad. So apparently Donald Trump has threatened to close the border in response to these uh, caravans. So we're finding out now that the caravan that came right before the 2010, uh, 2018 midterms, which we all thought we're all looking at each other like, did some Republican send this caravan? Because it was it was leading up to the 2018 midterms and it could not have possibly come at a better time for Republicans who are screaming to build the wall. And it almost looked like a false flag created by Republicans. Uh, now we know out, what it is. <laughs> yeah, it turns out it was a dry run. It was dry run, folks. So basically they sent up a single – Decent sized caravan, which actually grew because it was attracting more people to join the caravan as it was moving north. And it was basically to find out whether or not it was going to actually be stopped, success it would have at the border, whether it would be able to cross the border. And if so, then this needs to be ramped up and doubled, tripled, whatever, and, and duplicated, duplicated time and time again. Why? Because we have the 2020 census coming up and we need to load up blue states with the maximum number of of residents possible because as we said in yesterday's show, the census counts every single living human being that is permanently residing inside the United States. And they're fighting the question that that the Trump administration wants added to the census, which is your citizenship. Which does nothing. It it doesn't – the only effect it will have on the census is it might cause some illegal immigrants to try to avoid being seen by census counters. Yeah. Yes, which would, of course, have the effect of not being counted. And uh, and so that's the only effect it would have. It would be measurable, but it wouldn't be very significant. The point being that when a census taker comes around, it doesn't matter – what reason you're there and what your legal status is, you get counted. And why is that important? Because the total number for each state from the census for 10 years is what governs the number of electoral college votes that that state receives. So that is why they need to load up reliably blue states such as New York and California, and they're going to try to turn Texas blue, which these caravans will do that. Yeah. Uh, now, swing states like uh, Texas has been reliably, reliably red. I don't know why I'm having trouble saying reliably. Reliably red for the, as long as I can remember state. Uh, but on those counts, they can actually reverse it. They know that if they can get Texas to turn blue, Republicans will never win an election, not for – Decades, maybe for a long, long time, it would take a lot of red pilling to gain back any kind of significant national level seat for uh, president or anything like that. But we load up New York's big uh, because 
it has a large number of electoral college votes. If we can put more residents there, you can rack up more electoral college votes, which would offset the electrical, electro, electoral college votes. I'm having so much trouble speaking today, people. Um, for smaller states such as like in Colorado and whatever and Wyoming, I think they have like three electoral college votes. So very right. small. Hey, you're watching another video that I posted up here. This at Columbia Bulge, B-U-G-L-E. Or Bugle. Col- Columbia Bugle. Columbia Bugle. You, <laughs> Bulge. You're, you're, you're spilling over onto me now. I know. It's like an infectious. <laughs> We've got an infectious speech disease over here. Another massive caravan is on its way. Does anyone in Washington have the balls to stop it? Uh, some. It needs to be stopped. I actually criticized Stefan Molyneux, who's not even American. I think he's really frustrated when he said that as well because I agree with you 100 percent. Yeah. He said, why are we complaining about an invasion of our southern border when we have the most massive, powerful military on earth? And my initial gut reaction was, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're gonna, you, you're basically calling for another Kent State. Any kind of real force to stop them from coming over. With over – is just going to look like Kent State and just the image alone will cause a massive backlash that will cause big losses in elections and therefore not really that well conceived. However, at some point, something's got to be done because you know what they're doing. They're playing chicken with us now. They're like, ha we know you don't want Kent State and we know that you know that we're going to use the images against you when you try to forcefully prevent these people from crossing the border. So we're going to take advantage of that by basically going all in with a 100,000 flood of humanity cascading over the border, and we're going to dare you to do something about it. Well, at some point, something's got to give. And I think that violence between the American government and – the refugees or immigrants, illegal immigrants or whatever you want to call them, trying to seek asylum or just come over illegally is eventually going to be met with force. And uh, we're just going to have to be – the key is is that we have to be OK with a government show of violence to protect our sovereignty. Right. No, I agree 100 percent. And this uh, – for, for those of you who do not know OAN, One America News and sometimes referred to One America News Network, OANN, uh, this was a report by, from them uh, on the border crisis. 100,000 migrants pouring over the border just in the month of March. Of course, we are now in uh, the month of April. Um, Border Patrol warns the situation is past the breaking point. One America's Pearson Sharp explains. Senior U.S. border officials warn the southern border is on the verge of collapse with over 100,000 illegal aliens encountered and apprehended in March, the most since 2006. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Kevin McLeanan says his agency is overwhelmed and is already way past the breaking point. He explains 90% of those who were apprehended in March, over 90,000 people, are almost guaranteed to remain in the U.S. forever, even if their asylum claims are rejected. That's because over 90% of illegal aliens simply never show up for their court dates. The Border Patrol warns they don't have the manpower to deal with the crisis as the number of agents has actually gone down, while the number of illegal aliens has doubled, tripled, and quadrupled month after month. Without enough court and immigration officers to deal with the migrants, wait times for those seeking asylum is now between two and five years. All right. Okay, that sounds really bad. Really, really bad. In fact, as I'm listening to it, I just started to get these feelings of despair. And before I succumb to them, I already came up with the solution and we need to push for it. There is only one solution. Border wall is is not the biggest one. A border wall is only going to do so much. Should we build a border wall? Absolutely. Uh, I think we can afford it. We have the manpower to do it. We have the will to do it. We elected Donald Trump to do it and he's our president. So, yes, let's build the border wall. But there's only one way to solve the problem. Of the millions and millions and millions who are coming over right now as we speak. I'm not talking about the ones, the 20 million that have been here for three decades. I'm talking about the millions that are coming over right this second as we speak. There's only one way to ensure that either A, they go home or B, they don't come here at all if they're on their way and they haven't arrived yet. 
and that is a hard and fast e-verify requirement for employers. We need to make sure that there's no way that these people can earn any money. Right. And Any if, money if you, at all. If, and if you think that, uh, well, they're going to be on the welfare dole, they're going to welfare. No. Yeah, sure, they'll be no, on welfare. Make them but, ineligible but, for welfare. Uh, true, true. But but E-Verify would stop and reject them because they believe, they honestly believe and convinced that they can come up here and find work. Uh, Southern California is completely destroyed because uh, the, the construction industry is is overwhelmed with illegal immigration. If you don't know anything about uh, Southern California and the Home Depots out there, they literally set up offices in the parking lot for you to just pick up some yeah. illegal hands. Uh, Interesting throw them in say the, that. Throw them in the truck. They get $100 a day and a free meal. That is yeah. their demand. That's the going rate. And, and that being allowed... To, to, so crack down on that, too. Yeah, drive up to this – there's crowds of them. Six o'clock in the morning, you could probably find a hundred of – and when I say them, illegal uh, individuals from uh, south of our border loitering all up and down the parking lots of Home Depot waiting – for somebody in a pickup truck to come by and take them to a job site. Yeah, I think that if we did it, it could be totally comprehensive. So we have the wall, whatever. You don't even need the wall. That's another thing. A really hard and well-enforced e-verify requirement for employers with harsh penalties. And maybe maybe create a new department whose sole job it is is to go around and make sure that employers are complying with this and to uh, offer – or not offer, but give – uh, tickets or whatever, or even court dates to employers who fail to, to comply with this, you wouldn't even need a border wall. In fact, the border wall would only have to be built for one reason, and that's to stave off or, or help prevent Democrats from repealing the E-Verify rec, uh, requirement right. if they were to ever win an election again, which they will. We, that is yeah. that is a fact of life. We're going to have a Democrat president again. We're going to have uh, Democrat majorities in the House and Senate once again at some point in the future. Sometimes people get sick and tired of winning. I mean, that's how we ended up with Obama. Uh, part of it was that we were gaslit for five solid years from 2003 all the way to 2008. We were gaslit about how po- uh, poor of a president – uh, George W. Bush was when it was just all lies. It was all gaslight. And then when Obama came along, it was looked at, looked upon as like the savior of the country when the whole thing was just smoke and mirrors. We finally get somebody real who's winning for us on our behalf, who's making America great again. And I'm sorry to say, but at some point, people are going to get just tired of winning and, and want something different. We're going to have new generations coming up. People who are going to be voting in 2024 – we're only children when right. Donald Trump first got elected. When we had Obama as a president, the, the people that are going to vote in 2024 were only children. So that's how this stuff happens. Okay, uh, real quick, just around the show out, this at Juno GSP7, uh, Tom, Tom Moore, uh, retweet and let every member in Congress know you support shutting down the border, uh, funding wall, no blanket amnesty, uh, no HB1 visa, Overstay, mercy, declaring cartels. That's fine, but it's not going to stop what's coming up. I, I know, but declaring cartels, terrorist organizations, and recommending uh, recommended by the DEA. It's just a, another avenue. I agree with you 100%, but there's something else that um, – more preventable deaths. Another 33-year-old uh, illegal alien uh, from Honduras has been arrested, charged with murder. In the case of a nanny, strangled while out for a jog. Another murder by an illegal alien that should have not been in the U.S. Okay, that's that. This is going to be a little bit more frustrating. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, at Winston Kofefe, if you think the U.S. Congress is the only place infiltrated by Islamic terrorists, think again. At least 22 Islamic compounds still exist in America. How could we allow this to happen again? OAN doing some great reporting on this. And then at Cat the Hammer one I C Y M I. In case you missed it, many countries have a burqa and niqab ban. Burqa full body cover ban and niqab head and face. France did April 2011. Belgium, uh, July 2011. Uh, Bulgaria 2016. Egypt, the Netherlands, 
Switzerland, 2013. Italy, 2015. We absolutely need uh, a ban. And this is something that, that nobody, and this will be the last thing I'll say, this is something that I didn't know, and now it's starting to come to light. At, hey, it's Carolyn, on 11-1890, so 1990, no, November 1990, the 101st Congress quietly repealed the mccarran Warren Act of 1952, forbidding Muslims from holding office, Joe Biden, Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Al Gore, John Kerry, John McCain, Dick Cheney, they've been planning this for years, retweet, and our founding fathers absolutely agreed that Islam, Muslim, the interactions that they had with them, uh, that their culture, their ideologies were absolutely the opposite of the Constitution, directly, uh, the Bill of, of Rights, and that they could not be allowed or admitted into this country. Europe is gone. Uh, some of those countries are just completely gone. This is the last bastion of hope, and we've got to fight to keep it. And again, folks, you're listening to New Right Network tonight. Your host, Brian Smith and Kerry Smith. Giving you the, all the late breaking news of the day, wrapping it all up, making sense of it, exposing the fake news, and giving you the real news. For Wednesday Wisdom, pass it on, crush, crush the share, crush the like, and we will see you tomorrow for, oh, I'll be solo tomorrow. Yeah, Brian will be solo. Freestyling. I've got a, I've got a treat for you. Don't, don't do a man on the street. Oh, my really goodness. interesting. Oh, gosh. You're going to use the uh, wooden spoon like uh, uh, Austin Fletcher? Uh, yeah. <laughs> for holding the mic on a wooden spoon. Yeah. Sweet. You don't have to do that. You need the OAN mic with the big old square around it. Yeah. All right, guys. I'll see you Friday. Brian will see you tomorrow. All right. Peace out. See you. You've been listening to New Right Network, mobilizing, countering, energizing. Online at newrightnetwork.com.